everyone, this is Eileen C. Cabrero, one of the discussants for this chapter 8, which is all focusing on stress. For the information of everybody, I am the last reporter for this chapter. But before that, let's have first our learning objectives. First is to define stress and identify the various causes of stress in organization. Second, to describe the major effects of stress on people in organizations. And last, to identify the various ways that the stress can be managed on the job. Here we go! The word stress is an all too common aspect of work life today, something few individuals can avoid. In fact, a nationwide survey recently conducted by a large life insurance company showed that nearly 46% of workers feel that their jobs are highly stressful. Evidence such as this makes a strongest for understanding organizational stress. In this final section of the chapter, we will consider the major causes and effects of stress as well as ways of effectively managing stress so as to reduce its negative impact. What is stress? Stress is the reaction people have to excessive pressure or other types of demand placed upon them. It arises when they worry that they can cope. Another definition of stress is that stress is the wear and tear our minds and bodies experience as we attempt to cope with our continually changing environment. As we all know, that stress has negative impact in each and an individual, especially in the physical health, psychological well-being, and many aspects of just performance. Now, let us know what is stress and stress are. When we say stress, that is referred to a person's response to events that are threatening or challenging. While when we say stressor, it is a stimulus that causes stress. Or an environmental condition or stimuli that places physical or emotional demand on a person. So example of that is the physical and emotional. Another example of this situation is like you get fired the day before you become eligible to receive your retirement pension so that is an example of an emotional wherein it will make us experience being a stress and now let us discuss the causes of stress. What causes a stress in a work settings? Unfortunately, the list is a long one. Indeed, many different factors play a role. And one of the causes of stress is occupational demands. When we say occupational demands, some of jobs such as emergency room, position, police officer, firefighter, and airline pilot expose the people who hold them to high-level stress. Others, such as college professor, janitor, and librarian are less likely to produce stress. This basic fact that some jobs are much more stressful than others has been confirmed by the result of a survey involving more than 130 different occupations. The 
second causes of stress is conflict between work and non-work. If you ever known anyone who has had to face the demands of working while at the same time trying to raise a family, you are probably well aware of how difficult this situation can be. Not only must you confront the usual pressures of spending time at work and maintaining focus on what you are doing, but you also must pay attention to the demands placed on you by members of your family. Example, to spend time with them, provide financial support. When people confront such incompatibilities, in the various sets of obligations they have, they are said to experience role conflict. The third causes of stress is the role ambiguity, stress from uncertainty. This occurs when people are uncertain about several aspects of their jobs. Even if individuals are able to avoid the stress associated with role conflict, they may still encounter an even more common source of job-related stress that is called role ambiguity. So example of that is the scope of their responsibilities, what expected of them, how to divide their time between various duties. Most people dislike such uncertainty and find it quite stressful, but it is difficult to avoid. The fourth causes of stress is overload and underload. When the phrase work-related stress is mentioned, most people invention sense in which employees are asked to do more, more work than they can handle in a given period of time. Such an image is indeed quite legitimate. For such, overload is an important cause of stress in many work settings. In fact, in today's business environment, where downsizing is common, fewer employees are often required to do more work than ever before. The fifth cause of stress is responsibility for others, a heavy burden. Division of responsibility occurs in every organization. Some people deal primarily with the production side of the business. Example, obtaining supplies, maintaining equipment. Other focus mainly on financial matters. Example, budgets, taxes, and accounting and still others, usually supervisors or managers, deal primarily with the people. Do the level of stress associated with these contrasting roles differ? Research suggests that they do. In general, individuals who are responsible for motivating, rewarding, or punishing and communicating with others experience higher level of stress than individuals who handle other organizational functions. Not surprisingly, top managers are more likely to report feelings of tension and anxiety and are more likely to show over symptoms of stress, such as ulcers, hypertension, and other high-ranking officials who focus exclusively on functional areas such as finance or production. And the six causes of stress is the lack of social support, the cause of isolation. According to the old saying, misery loves company. With respect to stress, this statement implies that if we have to face stressful conditions, it's better to do so alone with others and with their support than to do so alone. Thus, this strategy actually work? In general, the answer seems to be yes. In fact, research has shown that when individuals believe that they have the friendship and support of others at work, their ability to combat the adverse effects of stress is strengthened.
It appears that social support is an unimportant buffer against the effects of stress. And the last causes of stress is the sexual harassment, a pervasive problem in work settings. There can be little doubt that sexual harassment, defined as unwanted contact or communication of a sexual nature, usually against women, is a source of stress found in many of today's workplaces. The stressful effects of sexual harassment stream primarily from two sources. One, the direct affront to the victim's personal dignity. And the second is the harasser's interference with the victim's capacity to do the job. It would certainly be difficult to pay attention to what you're doing on your job when you have to concentrate on ways to ward off someone's unwanted attentions. Not surprisingly, Sexual harassment has caused some people to experience many severe symptoms of physical illness and voluntarily turn over into distress. And now, let us discuss the major effects of organizational stress. By now, you are probably convinced that stress stems from many sources and that it exerts very detrimental effect on the people who experience it. One of the major effects of organizational stress is the stress and task performance. The most current evidence available suggests that stress exerts mainly negative effect on task performance. In other words, performance can be disrupted even by relatively low levels of stress. The greater the stress people encounter on the job, the more adversely affected their job performance tends to be. So talking available evidence into account, the most reasonable conclusion we can offer concerning stress and task performance is as follows. In many situations, stress can indeed interfere with performance. However, its precise effects depend on several different factors. Example, complexity of the task being performed, personal characteristics of the individual involved, their previous experience with the task. In view of such complexities, generalizations about the impact of stress on test performance should be made with considerable caution. The second major effect of organizational stress is burnout, stress, and psychological adjustment. Over time, they tend to be sworn down by repeated exposure to stress. Such people are often described as suffering from burnout, a syndrome of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion, coupled with feelings of low self-esteem or low self-efficacy, resulting from prolonged exposure to intense stress. Most jobs involve some degree of stress, yet somehow the people performing them manage to cope. They continue to function despite their daily encounters with various stressors, and some individuals, though, are not so fortunate. Specifically, people suffering from burnout demonstrate several distinct perspectives. One of the several distinct perspectives is the physical examination. Victims burn out, have low energy, and feel tired much of the time. In addition, they report many symptoms of physical strain, such as frequent headaches, nausea, poor sleep, and changes in eating habits. Example, loss of appetite. People suffering 
from burnout demonstrate emotional exhaustion, depression, feelings of helplessness, and feelings of being trapped in one's job are all part of burnout. People suffering from burnout demonstrate also their per depersonalization. When we say depersonalization, people suffering from burnout often demonstrate a pattern of attitudinal exhaustion known as depersonalization. Specifically, they become cynical about others tend to treat them as objects rather than as people and hold negative attitudes toward them. And last, people suffering from burnout demonstrate also feelings of low personal accomplishment. People suffering from burnout conclude that they haven't been able to accomplish much in the past and assume that they probably won't succeed in the future either. And the last major effects of organizational stress is the stress and help, the silent killer. How strong is the link between stress and personal health? The answer, according to medical experts, is very strong indeed. In other words, physiological strain reaction can be quite severe. In fact, some authorities estimate that stress play a role in anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of all forms of physical illness. Moreover, these figures include some of the most serious and life-threatening elements known to medical science. Stress stems from so many different factors and conditions that to eliminate it entirely from our lives is impossible. Fortunately, strategies for attaining these goals exist. So these are some of the managing stress, the some effective techniques. One of the effective techniques is eat a healthy diet. Growing evidence indicates that in reducing intake of salt and saturated fats and increasing consumption of fiber, rich fruits, and vegetables are steps that can greatly increase the body's ability to cope with the physiological effect of stress. Another effective technique is be physically fit. People who exercise regularly obtain many benefits closely related to resistance of the adverse effects of stress. So for example, fitness reduces both the incidence of cardiovascular illness and the death rate from such diseases. Similarly, physical fitness lowers blood pressure, an important factor in many aspects of personal health. Another effective technique is relax and meditate. When you think of successful executes at work, what picture comes to mind? Most of us probably would conjure up an image of someone on three phones at once, surrounded by important papers in a whirlwind of activity. Probably the farthest thing from your number of today's employees, this picture is quite common. What's going on these companies has been designed to help people become more productive, not in traditional, stress-inducing way, but by helping them cope more effectively with stress. One technique used in this regard is meditation, the process of learning to clear one's mind of external thoughts, often by repeating a single syllable known as mantra over and over again.
some effective techniques also is avoid inappropriate self-talk. This involves telling ourselves over and over how horrible and unbearable it will be if we fail. If we are not perfect or if everyone we meet does not like us, such thoughts seem ludicrous when spilled out in the pages of a book. But considerable evidence indicates that most people entertain them at least occasionally. Some also of the effective techniques is learn to react differently. When faced with stressful events, people often protect themselves from the rising tide of anxiety by adapting actions that are incompatible with such feeling. For example, Instead of allowing our speech to become increasingly rapid and intense, as we become upset, we can consciously modulate this aspect of our behavior. A reduction in aros arousal and tension may result. People who practice this skill report great success. Another, some effective techniques is take a time out. When confronted with rising tension, people may find it useful to consciously choose to insert a brief period of daily known as time out. This can involve taking a short break, going to the nearest restroom to splash cold water on one's face, or any other action that yields a few moments of breathing space. Such actions interrupt the cycle of ever-rising tension that accompanies stress and can help to restore equilibrium and the feeling of being at least partly in control of ongoing events. And the last of the effective techniques is enroll in a stress management program. A growing number of companies have introduced programs known as stress management programs that are designed to help employees reduce or prevent stress. Typically, this involves systematically training employees in many of the techniques we described earlier. Example, meditation, relaxation, lifestyle management, as well as others. That could be all. The sum of managing stress and some effective techniques. But before I will end my report, allow me to speak these quotes. Quoted by Terry Gillimitz says that give your stress wings and let it fly away. That could be all. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.